Hey everybody, it's Sophia Marco, Dish Out on the Movies. We're doing episode 5, sorry, of Fargo, season 5, and it's called The Tiger. And if you've been watching the, the series, you know who the tiger refers to. And I guess Marco's not going to say anything yet, but it refers to Dorothy. And, uh... She's in this entire, pretty much almost the entire episode. I'd say at least 90%. And she does her little tiger uh, behavior, which just makes it a really, I thought it was a really good episode. I don't know about Marco. <coughs> Is that a question? Well, you're going to give your offer up your opinion, I didn't. I didn't like it. You didn't like it at all? I liked uh, the opening where she is escaping the mental hospital. Why did, or I guess, get, why did they commit her? Who are they protecting? Well, I don't know because, like, they do it right at the beginning of the episode. So it's like, what are they really doing? I don't know. Protecting the, the son or something? I don't know. Because he's in the same hospital. They think they're protecting the son... Uh, they don't really explain it at all. Or the daughter. So that's how the episode starts off. And I didn't think it would start off like that. So, uh, but I really like the, you know, the first, like, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes when she's escaping and she's doing her thing. Uh, but after that, um, no. <laughs> that's well. my, that's my review. That's my full review. <laughs> Because, like, I, if I say anything more than, you know, I, I guarantee some people will be upset because there were a lot of agendas in this episode, and it was very reminiscent of, like, season four in terms really? of, in terms of, like, uh, all the male characters are pretty stupid and dumb, like, all of them. Even the, the main husband, even though the main husband is good. He's a good person and he loves he's, her. He's stupid and dumb. He's very naive. He can't do anything. Uh, the, the black guy, they didn't even show this episode, the, the trooper guy. No, So didn't. he wasn't even really in the episode. But then you have the lawyer. He's stupid. And then you have John Hamm's character and he's made to look stupid this episode. Even though I no, did... No, he doesn't agree with that, though. He thinks he's the smartest person in the universe. Well, the, the, well, we'll, we'll get to that part, because that part was, like, the worst part of the episode. But uh, then you had, like, that one security guy who forced the lawyer to show him his uh, oh, security yeah. pass. He's, he's an idiot. Weird. That was weird and stupid. I didn't like that. And I then that Gator that. Stupid... The, the men who go in there and try to kidnap the husband are stupid. Like, every single male... Ca oh, and then the, the, the woman sheriff's uh, husband, he is stupid. So all the male characters in this episode are pretty stupid, and then all the female characters are, like, the good ones. Like, uh, you, you know, it was just very, very bizarre. I, I felt like it was, like, season 4 2.0. And, but it was unfortunate because there was all this good stuff that was, like, trapped inside of it. So, like, all the good stuff just couldn't get out for me because, like, there was too much agenda crap in the episode. Especially with the, the mother-in-law, who I think is now, like, my least favorite character because... She's ruthless. I'm not buying her performance anymore, uh... I think that it's really fake and uh, phony, and uh, her character just, like, acts like a man, so I don't like her character at all, and the stuff that she says is really queer, I just can't stand her character, uh, she's one of those characters who, like, you know, in the original Fargo movie, the, the parents of the uh, wife, you know, don't they both get killed when they're trying to do the handoff to the bad guy. Somebody does, yeah. I thought both. I thought like all the parents got killed. I can't remember. I've only remember. seen it. I've only seen it once. But Sophie's seen it a million times, I just so don't remember that part. Very she much. she should be able to answer that, but um, well, she I, can't. I don't even remember the mother. 
uh, in the movie, I just remember the father. Well, the, he they was were very imposing. He was like, she's like the male or female version of the father. In and fact, you don't you are, we have only seen her husband once. That was in the first episode when they did a family picture. In fact, I thought she was widow for a while. They get until they did the family picture. They get Mark killed movie. in the original movie, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I just, I wish that they would kill this bitch. Well, I think in the next episode, they are going to show the father. <laughs> because there's somebody sitting in the preview of next week. They show city, somebody sitting next to Wayne. And, of course, the FBI has got to pop in here and there like... <coughs> I mean, I don't I want to speak ill against the FBI because they do. I do. Well, they do good. They don't all do bad, but this is bad. Because they're they're endangering her life. All everybody is endangering her life, and you know you think what she has to do is she she knows that that husband, first husband of hers, is ruthless, like her mother-in-law actually, and he'll stop at nothing to and get the, what and, he wants. And the Munch guy as well. He is also made to look oh, stupid. Yeah. So well, we, uh, we didn't really see him this episode. So we can't just, lump him at least just in this weird. episode. With all of them. Or just weird. So, like, you know, next episode, or I don't know, it just... Uh, I, I didn't like this episode, so I'm... Uh, well, uh, anyway, he... She, at all. She, and she gets her daughter and has her daughter come with her after she escapes from the uh, psych ward and saving her husband. Her husband was going to get kidnapped. And she knew that. Yeah, that whole thing was stupid. She's like she had to switch the nameplates. She name goes into this. The, uh, she goes into this. Ra she goes into this random guy's room, and he's mean to her. So she starts to kill him and suffocate him to death. No, she just put uh, him out. She didn't kill him. She started to kill him, and then she has it to where he gets kidnapped. Uh, Instead of her husband, an innocent person gets kidnapped because he was being mean. Well, he, he's and the one that was being mean last week. He got So hurt. what? Well, it's the same guy. So what? <coughs> well, he kind of deserved it. No. He was a complainer. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. I don't agree. So she switches tags, and they kidnap an innocent person <coughs> so that she can protect her husband. And that was stupid, because the FBI was right there, and they start to talk to her, and all she could have had to have done was tell them, those guys are trying to kidnap my husband, and I switched the uh, names around, and go uh, help that guy, and then she could have ran away. That's all she had to do. I, I but know. instead, she just let that guy get kidnapped in a hospital, right in front of everybody, like it's the fucking X-Files where you had the, the psychic kid get kidnapped, and it's oh, just yeah. fucking stupid. It's retarded. I hated it. Uh, you know, Safi's full of shit, <laughs> and so are the people who made this episode. <laughs> she jumps out a window too. We don't. We don't. I we're don't not know. even seeing. It's just like in the first episode. How does she get home? Well, in this episode, she jumps out of a hospital window. She takes Wayne's car, but I don't know how she gets it. How does she get out of the hospital, she though? She jumped out of the window. How? Where? In the bathroom. How did she not get injured? I don't, I don't, that, that's the thing, I don't know. I don't know how far up off the ground the, uh, she, they were. It I just shows. Was, I thought that was the ground floor. These writers, they couldn't think of a way to show that, like, her doing that and show, like, how it worked and how she actually accomplished it. So they just didn't show it. It's like, oh, if we, like a if, if we can't explain that, then let's just not show it. <coughs> well, you know that I, that I wasn't a, that, you know that that wasn't a first floor window. That was like a third floor window or I, what I was it? So I <coughs> they showed the buttons. They, they told the more to go. It was like the third floor. Okay. Well, whatever. I, it may be. I think so. I think you're right. Yeah, that's the thing. She's she's got this reputation now. She's the tiger, and they kind of <clears throat> they kind of did it. Gave it a, a documentary feel, like 
right at the uh, at the start. They say the tiger, and they talk about like the traits of a, t a real tiger in the wild, and they're and they're wa and you're watching her, and uh, what she's doing or not doing, and then they and then they br and then they stop and then they go. People do their dialogue and everything, and then they come back in when she's. Uh, in the bed, she's supposed to get up, and they say, you think the tiger is, you know, asleep or afraid or something, but no, they're, they're getting, they're always at the ready or something, you know, it's like an official, it sounds like an official documentary about a tiger, but, you know, they're talking about her, so I thought that was interesting. I just have a feeling that, like, they have called her that so much this show, I just have a feeling that the guy who made this show, he's already fascinated with this actress. I just have a feeling that, like, the tiger is the nickname that he wants to give her when he's uh, doing role-play games with her in the, in the bedroom. Because, <laughs> because like, it's, it's like a weird fascination with calling her the tiger in this season. It's pretty bizarre. We'll see. It's like... I don't know. I like it. I, I just... I I I have watched so many shows. And said, He's really really I'm a obsessed real with this actress. Strong woman, or you're a powerful strong. And in woman, this show, instead of saying instead of saying that in the show, they just say tiger. They don't say strong woman. They say she's a tiger. Yeah, but she proves it. Yeah, but this not. episode sucked. <coughs> this episode proved that it sucked, all and right. so all the good stuff is immediately negated because it's trash. Ooh. Well. Okay, so what, what else did you like about it? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing wrong. No. So, I like the opening with her tr escaping and uh, biting the fingers and noses and all that stuff, and then her breaking out of the hospital at first, and I didn't like anything after that. Well, at all. If I'm, I'm, I'm at all. I don't know what's going to happen, because, see, they're saying she kidnapped her daughter. Well... Basically, they can't keep her daughter safe. They couldn't keep her husband safe, and you, and he promised in, in a roundabout way, the sheriff did, that he's going to come back to the house and he's going to do something. And so, you can't protect them. You can't protect anybody there. They're all in danger, basically, because these people, they he just wants what he wants, and. Um, and she what's says weird that too. what's weird too is that we're not even seeing John Hamm's wife anymore like her character like his third wife I guess. We'll we'll talk about all that with John Hamm because that was the worst stuff. So should we get her Oh go ahead. Go ahead cuz we have to talk about the end Ugh. what she does with her daughter. And I just and, and the story is moving so slow. You can tell that they don't really have much of a story. So they're moving it at, like, a snail's pace. So, like, they're stretching the story so thin that each episode you're only getting, like, a teensy-weensy little bit of story. And maybe instead of doing that, they should have come up with more story. Because in no other season of the show, even with the bad last season, with no other season of the show did you feel like it was, like, barren and empty. And this season, though, it feels kind of empty. It feels like this story is not very meaty <coughs> because they're moving it at such a pace where hardly anything happens. And, you know, you see the teaser and you think, oh, a lot's going to happen, and then hardly anything happens. Because really this episode, <coughs> hard, hardly anything happened, and it wasn't done very well. Uh, it was kind of stupid. There were a lot of agendas. I did not like it at all. Uh, and so you have the mother-in-law, and she's got this really cringeworthy scene where she's buying the bank from these men. And well, she, she wants to buy the bank, and they don't want to deal with her because they're used to dealing with her lawyer. And then she turns it into being the fact that she's a woman, uh, which doesn't really seem to be the case. It just seems to be that they like dealing with uh, the person that they've dealt with before, and he just so happens to be a man. Uh, so she makes it all about that. 
And she says, you're going to do what I want you to do because I'm a, a strong whammon and uh, I'm going to buy your bank and you guys are little fuck nuts too. Like, that's the whole scene. And I was like, you know, this scene is like a scene that like a 12-year-old girl would write for herself in like a school play. Like a 12-year-old girl who like thinks that she's really cool and she comes to the school play and she puts on like a, a big overcoat that doesn't fit her and she puts on some old women's makeup, and she's like, see, I'm gonna portray this very strong and powerful woman character, and I'm gonna say lots of crude things and act like a man, and I'm going to impress all the boys and girls at my school, because I am just so much more special than all the other kids in theater class. You know, you saw this type of thing all the time in theater class. You either saw... The weirdos who would, like, uh, be really annoying because all they did was talk to each other the whole class. Uh, or you saw the people who were, like, show-offs. Uh, like, like this kind of, like, character. And I just, I hated it. And then she goes back home. And she has to deal with Roy, uh, John Hamm's character. Because he just shows up there. And this whole negotiation thing starts to turn into kind of like a liberal anti-libertarian uh, agenda scene where you can just tell that like the people who write this show have no understanding of what libertarianism actually is because they basically reduce the idea of being libertarian uh, to what she said which is uh, defending your right to be a baby and it's just so bizarre and such a, a stupid... You, and you know that, like, yes, this character is evil, so, like, obviously... They're both evil. Yeah, They're but... They're both evil. But we're talking about her dialogue here. Oh. Uh, but that, you can tell that that dialogue was written in the perspective of the liberal writer. And that they're projecting their own opinion through this character... And, like, even though she's evil, ooh, she makes a lot of sense because this is my opinion. Because I'm the I'm the special uh, Hollywood writer who can insert my political opinions into entertainment now I because... Agree. Really? No. What did you think of that? You it's thought... Just a, it's a... She's... She's a... She has this over-million-dollar business, multi-million-dollar business, and he's got... He has this whole county which he's a sheriff, and it's been handed down to him They for generations and generations. Every man in his family, head of the family, has been a sheriff. And he's just one of many. And he doesn't... He, he, we, we really, you know, it's really... We've already seen now, she, she does have this business. We know what the business is. We've seen a relationship with her husband. I don't get what he's supposed to do or how... Who got the business first? Did she get it from him? Did she start it or something? We don't know any of these details. And then the sheriff, I mean, it's all, uh, he has to get elected. He doesn't get the, it, it isn't a self-appointed position. Your relative gets it, so therefore when they're done with it, you get it. it, it it's voted, you have to be voted in. And, um, but there's lots of details we really don't know about uh, the characters. <coughs> but we can see hers. It's pretty evident. His, there's lots of things he's but what been is, doing. But what is the defense, though? Of, like, what is the in some kind of illegal arms. But what is thing. the defense of her saying that and, and that whole scene of like... She, she thinks she's a, the biggest bitch in the universe. So, but you think that the writers of this show weren't putting that dialogue in there to express their own opinion on libertarianism. I, I don't know. I, I really, I didn't... It was very I evident. Uh, I didn't, I don't know if I agree with that, but it... And the it thing was, is, too, uh, is they're, that... They're like at loggerheads, because I don't, she thinks she's the man, and he thinks he's the man. Well, the thing so is, though... like, if she's not, they're not going to agree. I don't think that he's a libertarian at all. I don't even because know what that means in terms liberta of the show. Libertarian means that you don't want any government at all to interfere with anything well, and you want doesn't. everyone to have freedom. He doesn't. But that's a lie. But it is he a interfered lie. with that couple. He interfered with 
dinners with everybody. Yeah, so he's not a libertarian. He's a, he's a dictator. He's not a libertarian. Well, I don't know. He said he was. At all. He said he was. <laughs> he thinks he is. He's a dictator. He interferes with everything. That's he's, right. He's a dictator. He's anti-libertarian. Plus the fact that he's got <laughs> abnormal uh, views about marriage and women. Well... It's abnormal. I, I I don't even think that that is realistic to <laughs> we, nowadays. We, we don't even we still don't even know all that. We only got a little hint, and that is well. He said uh, once you're married, you know, I, I, she uh, she was my property. Well, which I and did I, want I my did property back. I did look that up, and apparently it did used to be that way until there was like a marriage property act in the 1800s in the mid mid 1800s in what year was this <laughs> but i just i don't know if anyone actually thinks like that I anymore don't know. like they, I, you know they make jokes about it like they made a joke like that in the office but that was just like a joke so like I don't think anyone actually thinks like that I, anymore. I'm not Back, sure about that. Well, let's ask Take people. What's going let's, on in let's, Texas? Let's ask people in Google. Take what's going are on in Texas. Are women men's property? I bet the writer of the show wishes that the actors who played the tiger would uh, would be his property. Well, our wives. You hear what she said? What does Dot say? The very end, she's go She goes to the the uh, deputy or whatever she is. I don't know if she's the sheriff, she's the deputy, whatever. And she says, "Can you please uh, take care of my daughter?" Because I don't think she thinks her daughter's safe with anybody. She thinks they're going to kidnap her, and I would agree. The sheriff thinks he can do whatever he wants. Anyway, so she says, "Well, give me your story." And, and uh, I'll see after you tell me whatever you're going to tell me if I'll do that. And she said, well, I was 15 and they took me. And then I got married at 17. We have to know, what, what does that even mean? But it sounds like, and then I, I escaped. We know she escaped. She said that. She's, it, remember when she was in the, um, the, the gas station, um, food place the, and okay in in the bible there are some i guess there are some lines <laughs> that indicate that a woman is counted as a man's possession yeah. along with children slaves and livestock <laughs> i rest my case what well anyway so she she said you know this isn't my first in, in that when she was helping the uh, the highway patrolman, she said, this isn't my first uh, escape or whatever. I, I don't think the word escape was used, but something like that. And uh, she knew it was a bad thing and she got away. And that's how she knew how to do all these, knew how to do all those MacGyver things because she, she knew how to take care of herself. I don't buy it. So I we haven't seen the backstory yet. Yeah, I don't. We, I don't. Only got, I, I don't buy that. Bare hint. I don't buy and that. So it, with all these bare hints, it's almost like what we usually do. We have to put together the story ourselves. But I don't feel like doing that because I feel like we're going to find out. We should. And I think with Munch now they have told some of his story, but it, it, it's hard to understand. <laughs> I mean, it's the thing. It's where hard they, to understand. You know, they show this thing about the, from the 16th century. Yeah. And like, we're not really the average American or whoever watches this show. Average anybody's not really familiar with the 16th. Saul century. Saul Goodman. Saul Goodman's playing with me. <laughs> so, anyways, and then they had this other weird agenda where, like. uh you know he can't. He went outside after they were done, and he hinted that he was going to come back to uh, the lawyer, and he made fun of the lawyer's name because his, his name is Danish. Oh, his name is Danish. Danish Graves. I'm like, what's his name? And that is a weird name. It is a weird. Let's name. Let's look that up on. Uh, well, see, so you understand what the area is. The area was populated by Norwegians, Swedes, uh, people from Scandinavia. 
So Danish is kind of like... I don't think that's a real name. I don't know. I don't see it anywhere. Uh, but anyways, then he sees the daughter and he meets the daughter. Well, he sees that she looks just like her. And he comments on the fact that uh, she has a boy's name and she's like, Ugh, uh, 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 a woman with a boy's name. Uh, uh. And it's like, yeah, that is kind of weird, though. Like, why is her name Scotty? Like, What's that's wrong with that. That's a boy's name. Oh, Marco, just get over it. That's yourself. become like a modern thing to do, and I, I think that, that's, yeah, I that think that it, it, it's pretty weird. <clears throat> well, like, I, I, it, it I don't it works. Know what to tell you. It works like only fifty percent of the time. <clears throat> like fifty percent of the time, you can be like, okay, you know, because if there was a guy who had a woman's name. He'd be made fun of, and he would be teased, and he would be rightly humiliated. Like, uh, you know, like, oh, that guy's name is Shirley? Ew. <laughs> like, who wants to be with that? Like, ew. What, well, a, a girly boy type guy? Like, ew. Uh, but then, like, there's 50% of the time where it's like, oh. But this is the 50% where it's like, ew. Because it's like, Scotty doesn't even go with her at all. Like, I thought in the first episode, is she transgender because it's no. like a, it's a boy dressed up like a girl because it's no, got, she just has a style it's got about a, it's her. got a boy's name. Ugh. Like, why does it have a boy's name? Like, why couldn't they name her, uh, what would be a good name for that character? Scotty. Olivia. Olivia. Uh, no. a girl's name. Uh... But it's unique. That, it's that's retarded. Thing, that, that's the thing when I na when we named Marco Marco, I was thinking that's very unique, and there's not going to be very many Marcos around. I was right. And it and the first my first son, uh, first people were saying, "Will you name him uh, after your husband?" You know, like a junior. I can't stand that stuff. In fact. Uh, what is it yeah, you noticed that you didn't jump to call him Alyssa or Melissa. I'm not going to call him Alyssa. Oh, why not, Safi? Why not? It's Actually, cool. It's a style. No, yeah, that, that isn't the same. It's at all. stupid. Well, anyway, Marco has his opinion. He needs to stop and, being opinion. But they're, they're making it like, see, people like this think like this, and they're but all like just, this. She has a unique name. No, the writers made the John Hamm <clears throat> character... The way it's like they're lumping in people, like it, w I'm saying that that's bad. I that like know. I'm like John Ham in the show, <coughs> essentially. I don't think so that's what I don't they're think saying. You women are prop. I don't think you think women are property. Which, God bless it. What? I don't know what's going on with this thing with the abortion. Oh, Safi, fuck off! Get, get off of no. that! Don't talk about that shit. Well, I can't on here, get off of it. Talking about women being okay. property. Nobody cares, like Sopi. No, fuck off of that. They have don't no talk rights. about that. Don't talk about that on the video. Well, okay, well, don't do that. About Doc. Don't don't Does be Doc like, don't rights? don't be like the Fargo writers. Well, Doc, Doc don't be has like rights. the Fargo writers. Who knows what? And you know, we still don't. Another thing too was it the first episode or when they showed the other wife, the one he has now, which I presume that's his third wife. Uh. She has that trunk, and there's, like, little outfits in it. It was actually a really cool trunk. But um, she said, what do you want me to... He's in bed, and he's staring at the ceiling, and, you know, we, we talked about this. He sees Dot from afar, and Marco thought, well, maybe he's silent. No, you did! Well, I wondered, he, because it showed... I never him. thought that. You did! Well, they because you have, you have in these other episodes, <laughs> these other seasons... You had some kind of supernatural weird thing happen. The last season, it was a ghost. And the season before that, was that when they had the flying saucer? No, Safi. The season before that, they had the the bowling alley that was like a representation of the, uh, the what, what do they call the, the in-between heaven and hell, the limbo, limbo? The bowling alley of limbo, and then she was talking to God at the bar and everything, and they did have another Big Lebowski reference this episode. So anyway, every, every where they season, called, they uh, have some kind of supernatural thing. Oh. And I thought, well, maybe he, 
has some kind of connection with her, a psychic connection. But anyway, while he's sh sh seeing Dot in the ceiling or whatever's above him, some kind of cloth, she's pulling out an outfit. Do you want me to be a nurse tonight? Do you want me to be a teacher? Do you want me this way? And she would put on, I guess, put on the So what? To entice him. Or so what? Well, anyway. She's not dressing up like a boy and saying that she's a boy. <coughs> She's a woman. Okay, Mark. And she's his property, which yeah, is what she's he thinks. His property, yeah. But like if he's if she's his property, then why does he want an, another property? Like does uh, he that's, not, that's does, really a good question. <laughs> really. That is a good question. But I think he said he wants to kill her because she left. Yeah. And, but I thought it was interesting too. So he wants that, he wants to demolish his property. <coughs> the mother in law brought up brought out the fact here. Because she has this business with uh, his huge multi-million dollar business. You do deserve punishment, Safi, oh, for, 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 for talking about abortion. You're going to be taking a ban. I, I can't okay, believe let's somebody see. had to leave their own okay. state. Okay, we got to, one. He, so they wouldn't Strawberry, die. banana, smoothie, or dead fish. Let's see, where is it? Of course, Marco's doing it, but fix it. Here. He's manipulating. <laughs> I did. Here's your bin. Yeah, I'm not going to eat that yet. I have to finish what I was going to say. Go ahead. If I can remember now. So anyway, her, her mother-in-law. That's another episode. Dot's mother-in-law brought out the fact that after seven years, you can be declared legally dead. So she said, she's legally dead. And he said, and, and... He said, oh, her name is uh, Nadine. And she said, not anymore. Okay, this smells bad. Yeah. It's uh, either strawberry banana smoothie or well, dead fish. Well, strawberry banana smoothie would be okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Ugh. What is it? Oh, God. <laughs> How can something that looks good taste like that? Ugh. That's what you get. That's what the Fargo writers deserve. So, another thing that they do is um, she escapes the hospital and she. Uh, ew, I can smell it all the way from That's here. She, she takes her daughter to uh, the sheriff woman's house. And this is where we get revealed that the sheriff woman's husband is like a guy who's like a, a weirdo. He he thinks that he's a star baseball player or something. Oh, that guy. And and he keeps he's on a golfer. buying new equipment. He's putting them into tremendous debt because golfing equipment the, is expensive. The thing is, though, is that they're making it seem like. She has no choice but to, like, let him spend all this money. And, like, there aren't ways to, like, resolve that kind of situation. Like, in a marriage, like, she, she, she'll she just let him do whatever he wants. And, like, why is she still married to him, too? Like, if, she, if, if she's that stupid, then she deserves it. Like, she's married to him. Like, <laughs> she's, a, she's an idiot. But look what he does. He comes out... He's, he's been in the garage for hours, and he practices his swings. He has, and, and he has a, um, like a video projector of a golf course, and uh, maybe a computerized thing, so when he hits the ball with his, with his club, that it shows how far it would go, or, you know, all kinds of, you know, like an analysis machine of your golfing technique. And he has different clubs. So anyway, he's been practicing for hours. It's been like a job for him because he does it for hours. He doesn't do any work. And they're like, look, the whole reason why they're in this horrible situation is because this horrible man <coughs> keeps on spending all of the, the he's money. He's horrible. Uh, she, well, how did she say like, it, though? Why is she married to him? Well, I don't know, but it was interesting how she put it about somebody who has a dream and they haven't realized that it's not going to come through or something. 
it was a very clever way of saying it. And well, and I was thinking, like, what's what's her dream? That's a good question because they haven't said they they don't say anything about that. But anyway, he comes in. The guy gets done, and he says he he he's going to get a drink out of the refrigerator, and he says uh, something like, "I'm I'm going to go take those clubs back to this person because they're no good." I want to and try to exchange them for these other kind of clubs. And I don't know a, a lot about golf and stuff, except what the resellers have said on their videos. And uh, so I can't really say <coughs> the brand that he bought, he talked about, if that's such a really, you know, if that's like a real primo uh, brand. But anyway, um, and then he, he gets his drink out of the refrigerator and he comes to the table. He says, and Dot is sitting there talking to his wife and uh, they're having a cup of coffee because Dot made them coffee. And he says, hun, there's a woman in our kitchen. And then, and then she explains about her and she makes up something. And she says, uh, her daughter's gonna stay here for a couple of days. Now, and he says, "Hun," or something like that. <clears throat> that that's a is that a real child? <laughs> something like that. It's just like, what the hell? What planet does he live on? He's just so he's been in the garage too long practicing, and he's kind of like maybe he got hit in the head with a golf ball. I don't, I don't know. I just another thought, thing which I thought was very cringeworthy. <laughs> That was weird. Very cringeworthy was that the daughter was told to go watch The Little Mermaid because they had that, you know, the good Little Mermaid, not the token one that they made this year that nobody likes uh, and also failed at the box office, uh, but the you know, the good one. And the daughter says, princesses are stupid. And I thought, that is totally the opinions of the writers of the show. Oh that they inserted into this episode. <laughs> that is totally their opinion. I can imagine a girl saying that. Really? She doesn't care about Are you that shitting thing. me? She says she likes ninjas. But Safi, you, you a, a normal girl. A, like, what's a normal girl? John Hamm's daughters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I bet. The twins from The Shining. <laughs> the twins from The Shining. Come and play with us, Danny. <laughs> those, <laughs> those are normal girls, and they got they got fucked up, and they like princesses. <laughs> they yeah, like they the writers of the show don't like them because they, you know, they get into happy relationships and they're happy. <laughs> well, I've heard that kind of thing before. That doesn't bother me at all. Mark was naive. He has, oh! he has a cousin. Uh, his Brothers. She likes princesses. Well, she doesn't. Yeah, she, she does. Likes, she likes. I don't know manga. Yeah, manga. Kind of manga. Manga. Woman manga. Or manga is anti woke. Manga is anti agenda. Manga. I don't know. I don't know manga. About any of that stuff. There is a fucking movie <coughs> called Princess Mononake. That is a fucking anime movie, and she likes that. So you can't even use her as an example, Safi. Oh, I, anyway, I, that doesn't bother me at all. Oh, so, being naive. These writers are retarded, <laughs> Safi. Nothing happened this episode besides a, a like a New York Times uh, opinion piece by the writers. And uh, it just, it sucked. Except for the part at the beginning where she kicks ass with the uh, mental people. Like, that was cool. And I was like, ooh, is this episode going to be really good? Oh, never mind. And I was just also like, hardly anything happened in the episode. And I was thinking, we are halfway through the season. Hardly anything happened this episode. Can we get, like, a something happening next episode? Like, anything? Like, and something that actually makes That's sense. Tato? Something that actually makes sense, like, uh... In the first two episodes, because I think the first two episodes were really good. I give them both, like, A's. But then the third and fourth episode were, like, kind of, like, mediocre. And then this episode was not very good. 
So it really feels like uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't, I don't know. But Safi really liked it because she's biased towards the character. Like, because I still, I still like the character. The main character, she's really good. But that's not enough for me to say that it's a good episode. Like, I like Chucky, the <coughs> character, uh, but I'm not going to say that any sh- episode of that new show is any good. Because it's not. You're comparing a show to Chucky? Yeah. Oh, Lord. Because you can like a character or like uh, the actors and then think like, oh, that episode wasn't very good. Because I, I just didn't think this episode was any good. And I, uh, it felt like season four. <coughs> PTSD. Okay. What? what you you we... haven't even properly argued against anything that I've said. You have just said like, oh, opinion? well. That's your opinion. I don't agree. I don't agree. Like, that's not. It. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't even pushed back about anything. Like, you're just like, I don't agree. Because I can't argue with somebody who's stubborn. What do you mean? And that is uh, uh, opinionated. What do you mean? Yeah, well, you because can try. We both have you can a, try. Why don't both, you try? We both have our opinions. Why, why don't you try to like push back against anything that I just said? Why don't you try to grow a pair like oh, John Ham? Quiet. Grow a pair like John Ham, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> don't be a baby and uh, do something. The only thing good about John Ham is he's oh, from Missouri. You didn't do it. He's from Missouri. You, you still and didn't do he's it. He's a fellow alum from alumnus from the University of Missouri. You still couldn't handle it. I disagree. That's that's what your uh, defense is like. Well, if, if you're I, I if you're in a presidential I, debate, I, I disagree. Well, I, yay! I still don't understand why her mother-in-law committed her. Because we didn't see it when uh, she and her lawyer, Danish, must have gotten some kind of moral argument about that it just wasn't the right thing to do because they talked about that they had the argument and she said she was tired. Of it's, it. like, it's like you're at a trial for murder. And you're like, I disagree! <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you'd say, Safi? Whatever. Why don't you defend any of these things? Because you love the episode. What would you give the episode? An A+. Plus? No. Ten out of ten? Oh. I give it a B minus. <laughs> well, uh, we're just we're still I, I don't understand. She's going she's in trouble because they're saying she kidnapped her daughter. That's a very serious thing. And so the daughter is with the deputy. That could get her into a lot of trouble. So I mean I don't know how that's gonna be resolved. But I know understand why she did it. Because her daughter is not safe anywhere around the family. Because they tr- they were going to, and I hope they realize this. We don't, we didn't see this, but they were going to take the husband. They got somebody. We else's. talked about that. I know that, but they they are not. They are ruthless. They're going to do and anything the- they can to get her back. And they wouldn't, the wouldn't FBI, work. the FBI was right there, and this bitch didn't tell the FBI. Those people right over there are kidnapping someone. She didn't even do that. Well, They're the right first there. Time she's ever seen them, and they so come what? Up and they bother her. So what? <coughs> I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know if they could have done anything. Ah! Uh, I don't believe it. Those people are ruthless. They have guns. Safi, the FBI agents have guns too. Did you not see Twin oh, Peaks? Yeah, that's true. They do. I don't. I don't know. I just. Yeah. They're like. Uh, the FBI has guns too. <laughs> I don't know how they're gonna. I have no idea how everything's gonna be resolved. But I feel bad because I feel like everything's going against Doc. She didn't do anything wrong. She's done nothing wrong. She's been a good well, wife I will and mother say. and been supportive of her husband and she's been supportive and she did, of her daughter. She did fuck him up in the head too. What? Safi. He's got brain damage because of the shock thing. You'll be okay. He's like, hey, get my gumba gumba guy. That's show what he's him like. Him next week and he'll be fine. Okay. If <laughs> if you say so but one thing I will say. 
I'll try to be positive even though this episode doesn't deserve it and Safi couldn't even defend any of the attacks that I made because, because she's... I'm not going to. She's, well, Marco's too opinionated. She's weak-minded. He's, he's, she doesn't, he's like every, she every, doesn't have enough... Uh, Marco, what did they say? Foundation? Joseph. She doesn't have enough constitution to attack me. She has to... Oh, uh, my God. She's just going to say, I disagree. <laughs> I do. Bullshit. So I, w- I will say though that it is pretty cool that the 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 sheriff girl. It is pretty cool that she's gonna let the daughter stay there and she's gonna lie about all that stuff because in no other season of Fargo would a police person do that type of thing. No other season, and that has been like a huge problem with the show for me is that like these law enforcement characters. They're just so, like, 100% good that they would never do anything like that. And so it's kind of cool that, like, her character will do that because it shows that, like, you can only go so long where you write these law enforcement characters as all being, like, perfect people. And so in this case, you have John Hamm, and he's, like, an evil law enforcement person who he is not a libertarian at all. Uh that's complete and utter bullshit. Safi never defended that either. I, I'm not uh, into libertarianism. I am. A, yeah, a, I know, a, li- a little bit. A little bit, but not completely. You're not but completely into being a libertarian. You're more but I, I know that it's not what they're saying in this episode. <laughs> like, what they're saying that, like, you're defending your right to be a baby. Like, that's totally yeah, like that a... That was surprising to me. I, I was like, what's she talking about? That's a Hollywood type of line. <laughs> that's like a, a line that you yeah, would hear... I didn't, I didn't get that at all. That's something that you'd hear at an Oscar speech by, like, uh, Michelle Williams. Or <laughs> someone like that. Michelle Williams? Or, wait, no. Is it Michelle? Who's that bitch Michelle? I don't know. Actress? I yeah, Michelle been... Williams. Yeah, that bitch actress who uh, sucks. The one who was on... Uh, with, uh, the Twin Peaks uh, originator? No. What are you talking about? Michelle Williams, the feminazi bitch who uh, made that abortion speech at that one. Uh, what was that? A uh, uh, Emmys show I have no with idea. with the one that Ricky Gervais hosted, and he's like, "Shut oh. up about your politics." And then she went up there and she made this little crybaby bitch speech. Oh, like no. she is like like that. That I that's something. That's what I would have expected her to say in a speech. Like, the whole thing of, you're defending your right to be a baby. Uh, I just, uh, that sounds dumb. Well, that's what Safi, that's what you defended. You said, oh, I I disagree. No, you're, you're, now you're exaggerating. Really? Yeah. I give the episode a B minus. And I gave it a B. Uh, so basically we're not very far off regardless, so that's kind of hilarious too. Well, it was um, very, uh, you know, you had this really exciting part at the beginning, but everything else was very low-key. Yeah, and it's like... But you the, know, it's like, almost it's, like, it's a, it's like a volcano that's about ready to erupt. But it's been like that for three episodes now. Like, the home invasion thing last episode was anticlimactic, and then uh, the second, the third episode was anticlimactic. So, like, when's the volcano going to erupt? Because, I like, don't know if we want to see the volcano erupt. Why? Then the show will uh, get interesting. Like other seasons. Like season three, for example. Season three was a lot better than this. So, so far, my ranking for the show, the series, ranking is very important. Yeah, Marco just loves it. <clears throat> we'll see if this changes. My ranking would be the worst is obviously season four. Uh, I mean, there's no uh, debate. And then the second uh, least good would be season one. Really? And then, uh, well, actually, how did how did season one end? Oh yeah, ne- never mind. Season one's next to last, and then season two above that, and then uh, oh wait no, and then no, season five is above season four, and then season one, and then season two, and then season three is my favorite. And that's the one with Billy Bob, or no. Billy Bob is season one. Oh. Huh, oh, Safi. Shame on you. Safi. Yeah. 
Yeah. You're in a review. I know. I don't know what else to say. I've said everything I'm going to say. You do your ranking. How would you rank oh, the no, seasons? Oh, no. I'm not going to do that. No. Why? It's so funny because I, I saw... I, I watched a lot of these legal eagles, and I'm not just, I don't know what they were oh, ranking, no. but they were ranking too, and I'm like, oh my God, it's like an infection. People are getting this ranking thing. Sophie, do you want to, do you want to take another bin? I'm not going to eat it. Really? It's gross. I just took a bite out of it. Oh, God. <laughs> so anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and become one of our subscribers so you can, uh, so you can tell us how you you feel about Fargo. I'll, I said it in another video. Well, we just did a Slappy World. Uh, we just did number 10 of Slappy World. I believe it was number 10. And I mentioned they announced the Golden Globes. And I was going to look it up. But the main uh, woman, Doc, and John Hamm, they both were nominated uh, for Golden Globes. But I thought I thought there was another one too, like I don't know, screenplay or uh, like a, I, I don't know. I thought there was another one. I just don't remember what it was for, and I'd have to look. I could be wrong for the series. So I thought that was interesting. So I did the offer ever get any uh, anything? I can't remember. So I hope that that actress didn't get something for the offer because she was oh, terrible no. in that. That she, she she was the worst part of the offer. No, like the offer, the offer was good in spite of her, which was why it was shocking that this show, she is partially the only reason why this season is any good. Yeah. So anyway, goodbye, everybody. Bye.